when it comes to Monster Hunter, I feel at one point every new hunter has had a monster that has just completely stumped them. A monster that breaks and batters. And that monster for me, and a lot of others, happened to be the Global in Monster Hunter 3. A lot of you newer players have probably never heard of this monster, or ever really experienced the horror it brings to the flood forest and its murky waters. However, even though the Global was a scarcely missing creature in the Monster Hunter universe, with it only being in a total of three games, two of which just being spin-offs, has most certainly left a footprint for how unique and difficult the fight was. Its very first appearance was in 2009, and Japanese versions of Monster Hunter 3, with it making an appearance in an urgent quest called Accident Investigation. Partake in this quest rather early in the game, which only makes the Gobo even more terrifying when you fight it for the first time. Now let's set up a scene for a new hunter taking on this quest. Up to this point in the game, you've only been required to engage in water combat with one type of monster, and that's the Royal Ludroth. The Royal Ludroth is an incredibly easy monster to defeat, and generally spends both of the, most of the time you fight it on land. Meaning when the fighter first engages the Gobel, their underwater fighting experience will be extremely lacking for the task at hand. Another important thing to include is that at this point in the game, the player would have only been required to fight in the flood and forest once for a key quest called Save Their Boat, which required a Royal Ludroth to be hunted. So at this point in the game, there's a very good chance that you've only experienced water combat once, and the flood forest once if you're just grinding through your ranks. So as a new player, or maybe even a returning player from previous games, fighting a new monster in an unfamiliar area with a new type of combat never explored before in the previous game, that's a difficult fight. These three things, these three things alone are enough to set up a difficult quest. But we haven't even begun to talk about the difficulty of the monster itself. And we won't yet, because I want to talk about the Flood Forest for a second. Not only is the Flood Forest likely an unfamiliar setting for your first showdown with the Global, but it's also just a hard map to fight in, even when you're knowledgeable about it, particularly the water portions. In underwater ports, parts, holy shit, my bad guys, in underwater parts of Area 4 and the entirety of Area 6, the map feels particularly cramped, not to mention the dirty water adds to the difficulty of the keeping an eye on your enemy. Even worse is that in these areas, the camera often works against you, and if you're swimming by an underwater plant, there's a chance it completely blocks your entire screen. Honestly, in my opinion, fighting underwater in 4 and 6 are the most difficult areas in the game. And those two places are likely where you're going to spend most of your time when you're fighting the Global. Now that we've laid out the groundwork for how well you'd likely, likely be prepared for the fight on your first run, let's walk through the actual fight itself. To trigger the Global for the first time, you'll need to head to Area 6 in the Flood Forest, and you'll watch it pop out of the ground in a plethora off with its awesome sucking power. I'm not actually sure how to pronounce Plethioth, but that's not relevant to this video. After you watch it suck off the Plethioth, the fight begins. Now this is where I want to chime in and say, I am not a Monster Hunter expert. I've enjoyed the series for years and have put hundreds of hours into different games. So I may refer to moves, so the way I may refer to moves and other things in a certain way aren't going to be really the community standard, because I haven't been around the community in very long, just the game itself. Anyway. The Global honestly only has a small variety of different moves at its disposal. However, all of which it can pull off incredibly fast. With how slow your movement is in the water, that's going to be a big problem. The Global can perform quick bites in any direction, all of which deal a decent chunk of damage. It can inflate and extend its spikes out, which creates another hazard you must avoid. It can quickly swim across the, across the entire area with its mouth agape, close distance, and deal a hefty chunk of damage and a decent amount of smaller, less noticeable, move, less noticeable moves as well. Two of its most daily moves are its upwards bite out of the water and when it sucks you into bite, both of which will absolutely destroy your health since the best armor you're likely wearing at this point is going to be Royal Ludroth. Besides just that, just, <laughs> oh my god, besides moves that just deal damage, the Global can also paralyze you with stun. In all honesty, I've never been paralyzed while fighting the Global and only knew it had to move to do so after doing research for this video. The stun, however, is incredibly annoying, even though it is, is easily avoidable. The Global will light up its head lantern to stun you and any other monster around, then take that chance to land a devastating hit. Now, not does the Global hit hard and quick, it is also a very difficult monster to damage unless you're using either using a blunt weapon or a lance. The reasoning for this is, a lot of early game blade weapons will only really be effective on the Global's underbelly, where it doesn't have its protective armor coating. 
blood damage can more easily go through that all. So now we know all the reasons the first encounter with the Goblin is so difficult. Lack of experience underwater, new and difficult map, the monster itself is incredibly mobile and hard hitting. It's quite a step up from the Royal Legion. In my opinion, it is the biggest difficulty spike that I've ever experienced in Monster Hunter game. Now I know what a lot of you are probably thinking at this point. Why have I mission fishing out the goal or fighting on land? And that's because most new players aren't going to have the knowledge to go to Area 6, leave the area after they spawn the Gobel, then wait to bait the Gobel and fish it out on their first attempt. Also, because fighting on land destroys my entire narrative, since this is one of the biggest jokes of a fight in the whole game when it does get pulled up. Anyway, this video obviously isn't a video about, a video about how to defeat the Gobel, just want to acknowledge its difficulty for when you first fight in the game. However, I want to talk about some of the ways I first encountered it. The first way, of course, was going where to find a frog and where to fish to pull it on the line. If you're efficient, you can do a large amount of damage to the beast before it even retreats into the water. Secondly, use a lance. It is incredibly difficult to dodge a global's quick move set underwater with how slow you move. You'll fare a lot better against it by just blocking most of its attacks. Apparently, you can even block its flash stone. Never tried it, but during the research, pan people have done it. Another helpful tip is when it buries itself in the dirt underwater, toss a sonic bomb at it and you'll get a few moments to wail on its underbelly freely. Now I know none of that was unknown knowledge. That's why I did beat it and it worked out pretty well for me. Well, uh, that's pretty much the whole video guys. I hope in the future the Global can get the respect it deserves and at least be included in side games like Monster Hunter, Monster Hunter Story series. Obviously it won't likely make a comeback in the mainline series unless Water Comeback does and I don't see that ever happening. So I just wanted to bring a light to the awesome terror you experienced your first time fighting a gold for all you newer fans who've never had the displeasure of fighting gold. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hope you can forgive some of the sh uh, some of, oh my god, hope we can forgive some of its shortcomings. This is my first time ever really making a video like this. Please leave any advice you might have for me in the comments. And don't be afraid to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video and would like to see more in the future. Thank you if you made it this far. I really do appreciate it. Like again, I want to reiterate uh, this video was entirely scripted. You probably heard me mess up a few times throughout the script. Uh, but, um, yeah. Uh, so that's why I, it sounds like I'm reading off the paper. It's because I am. But as I practice more and hopefully get more used to this format, I will be able to sound more full of life. I'm going to try my best, guys. I really do promise. But um, I hope you guys enjoy the video. Uh, show support. Comment. If you guys hate the video, then tell me to kill myself. I'll be cool with that, too. Anyway, thank you guys and peace out.